want some water? No. Okay. Go for it. Yeah. All right. So here are the steamboats that were built by William Kent. So Vanelli Kent first, about here. And then Maggie Reedy, and then I found on the internet a little ticket. And then the Helen Marr. Hmm. And then I found this at the Chisago County Historical Society. Just some advertisements for um, taking the boats. So the, um, the Maggie Reedy actually went to St. Paul and then would bring people to the Dallas. And it was, looks like it was $2 a ticket. And then they went to the St. Croix Mineral Springs. So it was just kind of interesting to find all these things. Mm -hmm. All right, next came James Kent. And as we go, I know less and less about the people, so I just give you what I got. So James Kent came to Osceola in 1850. He was in the lumbering business. He married Mary Jane Wilson in 1858. They had five children together. They moved to Ashland in 1874. James died at the age of 53 in 1878, and Mary died in 1918. And the children, the children were Thomas, Abby, George, Roscoe, and Ernest. And then James, I think that's the right James, is buried in Mount Hope. Okay, then next is Thomas. Thomas left Maine around 1848, or 49 at the age of 22, he married, and I don't know how to say this, so maybe you guys know Oxa, I would guess. And I've seen this spelled like three different ways. <laughs> so whether or not this is a correct spelling, I can't tell you that. Um, Oxa's father was Judge Isaac Ward Hale, who was the first judge of Polk County. Thomas was a lumberer. In 1857, he broke up a log jam on the Klan River. He began heading back to shore when his hat fell in the river. He jumped into the water. I guess he was kind of acting kind of cocky or something about breaking up the jam. Um, and he jumped in to get his hat, and he was killed when a log rolled on him. And he was buried in Hale Cemetery. And sadly, six months later, his wife had a baby um, and named Emma. And later, Oxa married Meryl and Mason. So. And do you know where Hale Cemetery is? Not totally sure, no. Pleasant Prairie. Oh, that is one. Okay, I have been there. That has like three different names to it, too, doesn't it? <laughs> and then this is the house that they built. And I guess um, Oxa never went back to the house after Thomas died and that um, she went to live with her family, her parents. And this was like a rented out house for a long period of time. Okay, then we get to Anna, or Annie, and she married William Curtis Guild. William was Osceola's first postmaster, established in 1851, and served for 20 years. William Guild also operated, operated a confectionery store in connection with the post office in front of their home. Um, the first birth reported in Osceola was that of their daughter, Jenny. Annie and William have five children. So, Jean, who's called Jenny Aiken, Mary Eva, James Willard, Agnes, and Anna Curtis. And William died in 1888 and Annie in 1910. And then came John, or Jack, came in 1852. He married Jenny B. Kidder, so the other, um, the sister to um, Nellie, er, Nellie Kidder. On December 4th, 1866, John was the youngest of six sons. He was a carpenter, built boats and wagons. He went to Alaska in search of gold in 1896. John and Jenny had four children. Percy, Edward, William, Nellie, Mar Mary, and Annie, Lorinda. That's fine. Oh, is it? <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Way to call me out. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> sorry. No, I told you to. I, I want that feedback because I won't be offended. <laughs> okay, so Jane P. Kent married Jeremiah, or Jerry Mudgett, on December 31st, 1851 in rural Maine. Jane never had kids of her own, but she took in her sister Mary and her husband's Chapin Kimball's, and I don't know how to say that if I'm saying that right either, um, twins Wilder and Wilbur, which we'll talk about more in a little bit after Mary died in childbirth. They called the boys Wiley and Willie, and Willie died about a year and seven months later. They also raised John and Lulu, who are not a blood re relation. And after Jane's parents died, they moved to Juana in Hardeman County, Texas. 
Jeremiah passed away in 1900. Jane married Benjamin Franklin Turner, who was also a widow. He died in 1904, and she died in 1909. And so Mary Kent is the one that had those baby, the, those twins. So Mary Kent married Shapin Kimball on May 28, 1857. They had seven children together. Mary passed away on April 8, 1868 in Osceola, just six days after delivering twins. Wiley and Wilbur. The twins were given to Mary's sister and husband to raise. Shapin married for a second time in 1870 to Janet Thompson. Shapin died in Osceola when he was 82 on September 25th, 1911, and Mary is buried between her infant son and her husband. And this is the one son that ended up surviving the twin. And, um, yeah. Okay, then this is the last of the Kent children, Evelyn or Eva, attended Rockford Ladies Seminary in Rockford, Illinois. She married Henry Clay Goodwin on September 8, 1858 in Osceola, Wisconsin, when she was 18 years old. They had six children. Henry was an engineer on steamboats. He also built some of the buildings in Osceola. He was a musician and owned the first organ in Osceola. And they had the kids were Benjamin or Betty, Annie, and both Benjamin and Annie died from diphtheria just days apart. Um, I guess that's not days apart. Okay, so close to each other. Um, <laughs> Lily, Sarah, Mary Ann, Henry Bowman, and Eva. And Evelyn died at the age of 80, February, on February 6, 1921 in Osceola. And Henry died in Osceola in 1910 when he was 80. They're in Mount Hope Cemetery. And this is their house, mm -hmm. which is also like just down the street. Mark was like this. Mm -hmm. well, next door to the previous one, mm -hmm. which is. So I went to, again, like I said, to my mom's cousin's house, and she still has this china from the Kents. So that was kind of fun to see those. Mm -hmm. And then they have the family Bible, but there's nothing written in it other than her name. So it's kind of sad that they never report in there. And then my cousin. Uh, my mom's sister's son um, got handed on, I guess, some Polk County money. And as you look at the bottom, it says Osceola. So <laughs> kind of neat. Wow. I'm jealous of him. <laughs> <laughs> and then so what remains of the Kents in Osceola are a few, few things. So there's a um, street named after them. So the one that you can kind of find it behind Dick's, and the other one is kind of by the baseball field. Mm -hmm. And then so there's a sign from there. And then the sign at Cascade Falls. And I was going to add in there, there was also, um, if you ever have looked closely, there's a uh, mural on the side of um, Watershed. Watershed with the mill painted on it. And so here's just some of my sources. Family stories, family tree. I've got stuff off of Ancestry of Peoples. Um, Fossil of the Book of Village Chronicle. Osceola Chronicles by Grace Pilgrim Bloom. And then Perry Rice gave a talk on the Kent family many years ago. So I had his speech um, that I used. And then I have an untitled source. I have no idea where I even got it. And then Recollections of 1876, Polk County's first written history. And then just the other thing is just um, some little connections I've been making. So I've been trying to trace down descendants. Um, just to see where they are at and see if they have pictures and stuff. So recently I contacted um, Robert Kent's son, Benjamin Franklin Kent. Um, his, I think it's his, so it would be Robert Kent's second great-granddaughter in Oregon. So the um, two of his boys ended up in Oregon. Um, and one of them, well, they started a creamery in Washington. And then his kids started creamy creamery in Plymouth Falls, Oregon. Mm -hmm. And then Pat found a recipe for one of the ice creams, which is um, Tom and Jerry ice cream. <laughs> anyway, so for years I've been trying to contact that family because I kind of am a Facebook stalker and you kind of look on Ancestry and look on Facebook and find these people. And I've written to them, no response. But finally, I'm like, I'm gonna look one more time and then I found her business number. So just this last month or two, I contact, got in contact with them and she didn't even know like her great grandfather's saying it, so she was really assured that there's a connection. Mm -hmm. But her mom, who's 93, she said she's really with it. 
to talk to her and yes they have they have the same family so I've been she gave me some pictures and I've been sending her I have a letter that her third great grandfather or grandmother wrote and second grand, great grandmother to Susan Kent after Robert Kent died so I sent her a copy of those and so it's been really fun and then this other family who is from John Kent's Robert Kent's son John their family's kind of um, a little bit prestigious in California and if I've got the connections correct which I'm pretty sure I tried to get a hold of them but one of them is a producer of Game of Thrones um, the movie <laughs> and then one of them produced like The Gambler and some other movies so that's a separate person and then a separate person on that tree um, was editor for like Psychology Today and New York Times so there is even, oh and then one other one of those brothers um, has organic farming organic farm in California so they seem to be very intelligent and prosperous people so I haven't heard from them and they probably when they see my stuff they'll probably just think great great I'm not a cop on that lady she just wants some money or something <laughs> maybe someday I'll hear from them but I just have a lot of fun um, and I used to my last name was Christensen and I used to connect with my Danish side growing up more because I had the looks of Danish looks and my dad talked about the family all the time and the name so now I'm kind of really into the kids and my Scottish side that's all I have for you Very nice. Thank you. <laughs> um, have you made your own family tree? You know, like to see the the names. Yeah, well, I have an ancestry. I have like five thousand, like eight hundred people in there. So mm -hmm. I try to go up, down, around. Yeah. Really, I love it. I on it quite often. So I'm just fascinated by history in general. Do you know where William Kent Jr.'s the the double marriage took place? I think in the family home. I, that's what it said in one of the sources. I don't know who was home. Okay. I, I heard it took place over at the, um, uh, the there's, there were three stopping spots along the way to get from Stillwater up to the lumber. And uh, one of the stops here was um, what we know as the Charles Elfstrom farm. Um, okay. It's back behind the airport. Hmm. And that's where I've heard that it was at that boarding house that I heard that the, the wedding took place. Yeah, I have no idea. I just, I don't, there's not enough sources for me to pull all of this together. So I can just, it's kind of choppy, but. That's interesting. I always wondered how they got to be such great builders because mm -hmm. I have been through one of the houses and I looked at my husband and I built a house, mostly him. I just pounded some nails and things, but uh, I could see a big difference in the workmanship. Well, just the fact that they're still standing. What? Just the fact that they're still standing. Oh, yeah. So I had heard that when the children got married, Robert, or William Kent Sr.'s children got married, that he would have a house built for them for their wedding gift, but I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, William and William, and then some of the boy, uh, other boys were, and some of and his kids were, yeah. a couple of them, so they had a lot of... They were good at a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, I'm not from all of them, but... Sweet. It encourages me to have all this scripture. Yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> So does anybody know anything else about the Kents that I don't know about? Or any connections or anything? So there's really nobody I know of that really lives around here directly that's a Kent descendant other than myself. But I know that in like Clear Lake is where my mom's cousin lives in Lake Clayton. Um, I know there's some Case, the last name's Case. Um, some people there with that name. But, and then so I found some in Minnesota. Otherwise, a lot of them ended up in like Oregon. Following the lumber out? Yeah, I don't, like, mm -hmm. you probably have the best guess, but I'm not totally sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very interesting. It's 
fun to go through the cemetery and look at like who the the women married and everything up yeah. because it gets to be a very tangled web of <laughs> the good ones. And See, and I'm still like that. I'm like, I think our family married that one, but I don't know <laughs> if that's the one or who married it. So, I mean, the, doing this has kind of made it a little bit more solidified in my head, but it's still, I'm not quite there yet still. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's very confusing. Does, does anybody know what the name Osceola means? Yes. It's named after Indian chief. Seminole. What? Indian chief. It does his name. Okay. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of towns all over America named because there was a very famous Indian chief. He was a Seminole in Florida. And they, the, the American government wanted them off their land. And one of the, I just learned this recently, but one of the reasons they wanted the Indian tribe off the land was because escaped slaves from Georgia and South Carolina were going down there and finding sanctuary. It's an incredible with the, with the Indian tribe, the Seminoles. In fact, a large number of the so-called Seminoles were escaped black slaves. And the United States government worked overtime for decades to drive them out of their lands, send them west of the Mississippi into Oklahoma. And the white Americans, in, in some cases, were so outraged at what the government was doing, they started feeling quite a bit of sympathy for Chief Osceola and the other Seminoles. And so all across the United States, there's different towns named Osceola, Osceola, Iowa, and different places. But there was, that much, there was that much feeling against what the government was doing to these people and how unfair it was. But eventually, they pretty much drove everybody out. There's still a few Seminoles down there, but it's a very small number of people. But that's the Osceola story. So. Of course, originally, this wasn't called Osceola. It was Leroy. Leroy, yeah. yeah. Did he die in prison, um, Osceola? Was that the 